กรรมวิธีกสันตนียกัมพูชีนังปีพบโลกอ่า from retail residential office space industrial so in other word uh, it's pretty much a, a whole spectrum of the industry that uh, I hope that we'll be able to cover in the the in this 45 minute uh, Simon uh, welcome to the show thanks <laughs> thanks for having me yeah but anyway before we we start a dialogue uh, I'll give you a couple of minutes to introduce yourself you know a bit about yourself. Mm. Background a bit, you know how how you end end up uh, being in the real estate industry. Okay, and you know, time to meet. You can also say something about the organization you work with, CBI. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, well, thanks for having me. Pleasure okay. to be here. Um, I first came to Cambodia about nine years ago. Oh wow! Um, it's one of these people with their backpacks on, yeah, exploring Southeast Asia. Uh, and I ended up staying about six months. I absolutely loved it. Um, but I never intended to come to Cambodia. I was just passing through from Laos. Um, but five and a half years ago, I had the opportunity to come back and work full time uh, with CBRE. So uh, I, I took that opportunity, um, and I've been here ever since. Mm. Um, so what I do here is I'm uh, the senior associate director with CBRE. Um, we focus on. Um, we have eight different departments. Okay. Uh, we offer services from uh, pre-development, being feasibility research and consultancy evaluation, um, all the way through to sort of uh, while developing, which is our sales and our agency and our leasing sides of the business, through to uh, property management mm. and uh, post-completion. Okay. Um, how I got into the industry. I always, I always wanted to something where I could see my work and the physical manif manifestation mm. of what I was doing, um, and I, I was always uh, early on in my career. I was balanced between marketing uh, and property. I wanted the aspects of being able to deal with people, okay. but also to see what you're dealing with, uh, and and there being um, some sales, some personal skills, some academic sides. Okay. Um, and and properties are uh, mm. nice and uh, CBIE has been in Cambodia what? How long? CBIE has been in Cambodia since 2008. 2008, yeah, that's with a quite permanent long. office. But the first time we did a deal uh, was 1993. So we were flying in in the um, Australian uh, embassy site. Yes, yes. There's a deal done by my uh, uh, previous chairman. Is that right? Is we that were right? flying in from Australia. I see. Uh, from uh, Thailand. C CB is a UK uh, company. Um, it's the 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 RE. Yeah. Is a uh, UK. It's yes. Richard Ellis. Ah. The CB yes. is a uh, Coldwell Banker. Yeah. Which was a uh, US. Yes. Okay. And, uh, the two merged. Oh, so that's that's what the and, uh, that's how CBA came about. So it has very strong roots with uh, the UK and the yes. US, but headquartered out of the US. Right? Yes. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so they're quite uh, they're international. I mean, you go to all the major market that there. Yeah, I think by some uh, some measures, yes. there's, there's different measures, but the biggest commercial real estate company yeah. in the world. Okay, good, yeah. good. Well, I mean, we we are pleased to have uh, an international brand in the you know in the industry here yeah. because I think it's important that uh, we have. Uh, Some uh, international benchmarking also, yeah. and to have a company of that stature, so sort of give us the confidence that their analysis, your analysis that you, we're going to talk a bit later on. Well, you know, we, we have uh, some uh, clear, you know, uh, scientific 
uh, background, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, uh, the public will, will believe whatever you say, yeah. right? Yeah. But anyway, uh, from your eight year that CBIE in Cambodia, what do you see? Well, let's start historically a bit. Like, yeah. how, how do you see uh, uh, the, the development of Cambodia, the, particularly in the, this industry? Uh, I can tell you this, you know, eight years ago when uh, CBI came, the landscape of Phnom Penh is probably a flat capital, right? <laughs> yes. Four story yeah. highest, Except right? Except for Wat Phnom, yeah. Except for Wat Phnom. <laughs> yes, yeah, very low rise city, very low rise. Um, anecdotally, I remember coming and go driving around with my, my first boss at the time and looking for projects that we could work on. I mean, CBRE traditionally work on tall buildings yeah. uh, and, and big developments, and we were scratching our heads. Um, going, oh, is that quite big enough, five stories? <laughs> <laughs> um, and the situation is just it's vastly different now. Um, I, could, I could name every sort of new development hmm. in town um, back in 2011. Struggle now. What 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 is the uh, catalyst mm. that that provoke uh, this uh, sort of like a chain reaction, which we see in in, in less than uh, five or six years? Yeah, you see that boom. There. What will be the, the well? The I I think the boom was actually the the latent potential mm. was actually there before the global economic crisis. Yes. Um, so what you you saw was. Um, a lot of the, the so the, the capital to actually sort of start this boom, mm. the, the, the flint, the trigger, um, was 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 not really hugely there in the local population. Okay. So um, you saw the the Korean community coming with mm. a lot of yes uh, FDI, um, but the global financial crisis put put the brakes on everything. Mm. Um, but Cambodia didn't suffer too badly mm. in the, uh, the the size, the small size, yeah. made it relatively uh, insulated. Mm -hmm. um, so it actually continued to to perform globally extre extremely well. Mm. Um, so 2011, 2012, um, we were coming out of the global financial crisis, um, and especially Southeast Asia is the, the growth potentials. Uh, the highest performing region in the world. Mm -hmm. um, it was all bubbling in the, underneath the surface. Yes. And what, one of the first countries to sort of come in and give the green light, I remember, was uh, uh, Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, and their aid agencies, JICA and Jetro, um, who, who do lots of sort of reports, gave the green light to Cambodia. And we saw the three biggest Japanese banks mm. come in and. Um, it's it's interesting to watch how the Japanese community and businesses work. Yeah, they tend to follow one another. Yes, uh, very much a, a, a pack. Yes, approach. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so the banks came, and then we saw a lot of uh, Japanese investment, mm. uh, and then we had uh, big success stories such as Oxley and the yes. Bridge and Singaporeans, um, and there were many many people who wanted to come mm -hmm. and get involved. Mm -hmm. uh, well, yeah, so so basically, there's a lot of. Uh, Regional factor at, at play, yeah, you know, because uh, Cambodia is part of ASEAN, and I'm pretty sure uh, different policy, you know, in different ASEAN country will have an impact. Right? I mean, in the case of Singapore, Singaporean investing in say Oxley, for example, mm -hmm. and many other Singapore project, uh, to me, there's a clear direct link on policy. Uh, in Singapore, in terms of cooling down, uh, of in the market, that sort of thing. Well, you, you see that too. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so the, the more developed economies in in Asia have have been relatively stagnant, mm -hmm. um, and the cooling down mechanisms in in Singapore making it extremely high tariffs mm -hmm. to sort of sell um, your property. Um, meant uh, speculation was just completely sort of ruled out yes. and leaving your money in the bank at a uh, one or two percent then it was almost not even quite inflationary but pretty yes. so when you're offered uh, strong guarantee deals here with a developer that you trust mm. um, it made a lot of sense mm. and, and Oxley had they, they leveraged that good reputation yes, yes. but you've also seen that from Taiwan yes 
Uh, and you've also seen that from Japan. Mm-hmm. Um, not so much Hong Kong, strangely. Mm. But um, and, and China? Not so much, mm. no. Um, different business model, no? Different business model. And, and the sort of Chinese development is, is, is the latest wave we've yes. seen. Japanese, Singaporean, mm. uh, Taiwanese, yes. uh, Korean, and then uh, and sort of Chinese is uh, the last one. Yeah, the party, last yeah. wave because uh, basically yeah. the, the green light came uh, only recently with the President Xi Jinping uh, promoting the One Belt One Road initiative. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that, that sort of gave a, a big uh, stimulus to the Chinese investor to yeah. say, look, okay, so we have to go out and Cambodia is uh, one of the prime uh, country to, to target also. Yeah. But in, in terms of uh, pricing, if you benchmark uh, vis-a-vis other neighboring uh, country like uh, Ho Chi Minh City, Hanoi, Bangkok, yeah. KL, Singapore, Jakarta, where, where, where are we? I mean... Um, still relatively cheap. Yeah. Um, not in, in terms of rents, um, uh, well, if we talk about sale prices for, yeah. for, to start with, um, prime downtown or city center Bangkok is is quite a bit high. We can okay. say twenty five to forty five percent higher than yeah. the rates here. Um, with the penthouses the most exclusive, yes, uh, really uh, exceeding that by mm. quite some distance. Um, Vietnam's competitive. Mm. Um, Vietnam's put some products on the market, um, which you'd say as a benchmark are ten to ten to fifteen percent cheaper. Okay. Um, but then around the region, uh, Cambodia, they're, they're the lower sort of end of the mm. price. So, so in other words, compared it, to it, Singapore, it, it doesn't even very, reach very good. Oh my God, I mean, Singapore is so expensive, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so I think so. We, so our price is relatively uh, very good. I mean, the margin to grow is is still very very high. No, so um, I'd say a couple of things. Um, Land prices in it for a city centre. Yeah. Well, we've we've all seen them, you know, escalate and and seen the graphs and the growth figures. For a city centre, they're still relatively low. Okay. Um. So and your development costs are, are low. So actually, the the margins for some of the developers yeah. are, are quite lucrative mm, at the moment. Okay. So they have uh, the ability to, to be slightly more competitive. Yes. Um. But as but as the city grows, as mm. traffic gets worse, yes. the demand for prime sites within the city mm. uh, will grow. Uh, yeah. So I, 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 is that w- that's why it explain, you know, say for example, Eon building another one, uh, not in the city, but uh, in yeah. the outskirts of the city. Yeah. Uh, retail is all about catchment areas. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. It's how long will somebody, com- there's a whole science to retail, hmm. uh, how long will someone commute to go to that? Uh, retail's about convenience, ultimately. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. We're all creatures of habit. Yes. Um, and if something's easier to do than harder to do, yes. we choose it easier. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Aeon picking that second site is so that we've got two catchments yes. to basically cover what they see as... Mm. Both the consumer bases. Mm-hmm. If you're coming and and Tall Cork and Sensok being quite an up and coming. Yes, area. yes, so. indeed, indeed. So, so all in all, I think we can say that Cambodia, or in this case, more Phnom Penh. Yeah. Uh, later on, we'll, we'll try to talk a bit more on the provincial uh, coastal area. You know, as a future source of yeah. growth yeah. for the industry. But uh, as a country as a whole, we're doing fine in uh, relative to the neighboring country, right? We're doing well uh, in, I can really only focus on real estate. Um, I did have a, a conversation with um, what one of the heads of a, a bank here, mm. and, and she, um, she worked in China for a long time. Um, and I think, you know, one of the biggest threats is, um, I think where we are currently in the market, mm. there's a lot of talk about oversupply mm. and different things, but ex- most of the, the experts, or certainly I believe we're, we're at a stage where it's not a crisis point. Okay. Um, when you talk in percentage terms, the growth figures look huge. Mm. Um, when you talk, talk in real terms, because we're coming from 
such a low base yeah, of yeah. just a couple of hundred of four hundred condos in two thousand and eleven yeah. to you know twenty plus thousand the, the growth figures. But in real terms, there's over six hundred thousand condos in Bangkok. Yeah, yeah. Completely different city, but uh, and over two hundred thousand in, uh, in in Ho Chi Minh. Mm. So twenty twenty four doesn't yeah, yeah. many. But the the, the real threat being um, this concept that I was introduced to from from China being not just a boom but a super boom mm, okay where the market dynamics are just completely ignored mm. and the Chinese because they have have quite a strong construction mechanism mm. and, and workforce mm. and, and ethic continue to build mm. okay <clears throat> continue to build and, and that could sort of yeah tilt the balance in, in the wrong yeah. direction so I think <clears throat> we, we it's a good time to take a short break when we come back we'll try to look a bit more on the subsectoral okay. of the industry all right Uh, Simon, okay, so we have a, a good uh, broad perspective of uh, the country as a whole. Uh, I, I want to focus first on the, you mentioned about the condo which is more residential, right? Mm. You know, what, what uh, in, in Cambodia, Cambodian are very uh, new to this concept of condominium living. Mm. You know, we, we love land, we like to have uh, two trees and a dog, you know, I mean, space. Lately, the last four or five years, we see this uh, Boray sprucing up, right? Mm. What, what, what do you see in the residential per se, you know, Boray and uh, apartment you know, construction? How, how do you see the, the growth prospect? The growth prospect, um, <clears throat> I, I think developers are now, well, I, from my conversations with developers and, and just the facts and figures in the market, most people are coming to the realization that there's uh, there's there's enough supply mm. of condominiums, so that's not really being the focus. But in terms of um, the prospect, if if you're one of those buyers, mm. <clears throat> um, some developments, I think, even with with more supply than, than mm. perhaps the market has, has cons you know absorbed at the moment, some developments will do particularly well, mm -hmm. um, and many people will gravitate towards those developments, high yes. quality developments, the ones that are managed well. And, and those investors will be will be fine. Mm -hmm. There'll be some developments which perhaps aren't finished to quite the standard and don't do so well, mm -hmm. um, which which might might struggle a bit more. Yeah. Um, so in terms of where we are in, in supply, uh, I mean, comfortable at the moment, but, but there isn't really um, room for a huge amount more. Okay. On, on the Bore side, CBRE and myself, we're not experts in, okay, in the okay, Boree market. Okay. We don't really. Yeah. Move, but uh, from speaking with many of my peers, mm. they believe it's coming to a point of, of saturation. Saturation also. Well, b because mm. I, I guess uh, the there's only so many uh, middle class. Yes. In that uh, and the, the first few one did well. You yeah. know, and the latecomer. Uh, uh, Phnom Penh is is not uh, Cambodia is a small yeah. country. I mean, you think about the fifteen million people. Yeah. Uh, so so anyway, uh, so I'm not too worried about that. But I I see now uh, a, uh, an appreciation of quality uh, lifestyle, w yeah. which 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 lead to uh, you know what I want to cover, which is more the retail, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, before all you have is row house, you know, and then people have the shop there. But since Eon came into the picture, yeah. TK Avenue, I think the lifestyle have changed, no? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, it's you know the the Cambodian people I, I have a very aspirational. Hmm. You know they they see these things on TV, uh, especially the the young generation. Yes. They want to be part of the modern world. Yes. Um, Aon was a great introduction. Um, whether it's pricing structure allows everyone to afford to buy mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. but everyone will go and have something to eat. To eat yes. Whether it's the two dollar price range yes. or the twenty dollar price, it's amazing. Yeah? Um, so I think that's a, it's a real game changer. Mm -hmm. And when people go to Bangkok or, or even um, uh, you know, Ho Chi Minh, yes. they, they get to experience these malls and lifestyles, yeah. and they want to be a part of it. So. Um, I think continually we'll, we'll, we'll see uh, more of a movement to more um, away from more wet markets, dry markets, yes. your, your traditional markets, uh, and, and more towards um, 
uh, modern modern yes, uh, yes. modern mall yeah. uh, tastes. And and I, I think it's also because all these malls are sprucing up bigger, smaller. It's competition, you know. Yeah. It's competition for quality. And in the big office building, they they always have now uh, uh, so many floor well, uh, retail. Right? Yeah, they do like to do that. Um, it, it works very well with some concepts. Mm. Um, uh, but it has to be done well. Yes. The, 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 the good thing about retail, and, and, and people think, oh, well, we've got Aeon Mall, we have this, we have this, surely that's oversupplied now mm. as well. Mm. Um, every different mall uh, has a different um, a brand, a different I- image, a different yes. pricing strategy, mm. a different tenant mix. Mm. Um, so Aeon Mall being sort of uh, a mid to high level mall, yes, yes. Um, there's there's lots of opportunity to have uh, lower lower cost malls, but mm-hmm. still designer and stuff. I mean, you go to Siam Center in Bangkok, yes, yes. and then you've got um, the BKK Center, yes. and, and they're different ends exactly. of the scale, and you've got everything in between. Yes, and just the environment of being inside, where it's aircon and cold and clean, I think yes. you know, is is naturally going to. But I, I I find there's a lot of social. Uh, effect also in the sense that mm. people start to appreciate uh, the cleanliness. You know, yes, yeah. uh, you go to the restroom. You know, in Eon, you you see ah, oh, you're supposed to do this, this. You know, and sign. So it it, it has a lot of educational yeah. uh, aspect for uh, society as well. I mean, a lot of people are coming from uh, the countryside, right? right? Yeah. They they migrate to the city. They work in government factory. Different environment, in terms of sure, hygiene, in yeah. terms of uh, appreciation of the cleanliness. Then you go to Ian Mo and say, "Wow, yeah. you know." And I think uh, you you said the right word that Ian is sort of like a, a pioneer mm. to set the trend. You know, uh, in terms of uh, they're not high end, high end, but they're there, right? Yeah. So, but the, I I see other more coming up also, like the bridge. Uh, yeah. I, I think they're finishing way before yeah. uh, schedule yeah so the bridge will uh, the bridge will start um, leasing retail space quite yes. soon yes. Um, and that'll be a, a very interesting concept I think what you'll you'll see around that area the yeah. peak also has which is not finished until 2020 but another Oxley World Bridge development um, has retail in it within it as well so a, about a third of the size of, yes, of yes. Uh, Aeon, but it will differentiate itself from Aeon. Yes. So within that area around mm. Riverside, which you have Diamond Island as well, which is quite an entertainment mm. uh, area, you have lots of uh, barbecue and restaurant places yes, yes. around uh, like the Australian embassies. You, you'll see a, a, a retail entertainment quadrant mm. of the city. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so uh, it's very exciting. Mm. Um, so so the, the, the retail uh, is growing, uh, yeah. retail space is growing, mid and high, not yet high end per se. No. The, the market doesn't bear that yet. Um, well, the, there are high end shops and, and uh, Vatanak Capital. Yes, yes. Um, but it, it's definitely not mass market. That yes, is, that yes. is quite high, high yes, end. Yes. Um, but all the other malls and Parkson mm. Mall. Um, yes. Yeah. Parkson is also mid end. Parkson is also mid-end, um, and it's actually called uh, Phnom Penh City Centre. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Parkson is uh, uh, a uh, anchor tenant. It's yes. the, the biggest tenant mm-hmm, within mm-hmm, it, but it's mm-hmm. not the only tenant. It's, yes, it's, yes. Uh, not just them all. Yes. Um, but again, a great addition, Aeon 2. Um, th- there's some other products as well. I think we're really going to see attitudes changing towards these malls. Mm. Um and, and it's because, actually, one thing Phnom Penh really quite lacks mm. is uh, entertainment. Okay. So we have... By, what do you mean by that? Well, we have a huge amount of food and beverage. Yes. You know, there's a different style of restaurant or coffee shop. Coffee yes. shop. Yeah, exactly. every corner. Yeah. But um, if you go to many other cities, there's more in, in the way of entertainment, where it might be uh, live shows. Mm, okay. Or, um, live performance. Live right. performance, uh, whether it's uh, your Thai or Khmer boxing, yes. okay. or um, an actual show of, of some cultural value, yes, or ballet, yes. or mm. um, uh, as well as you know retail, which introduces uh, sort of um, 
area or you know, live bands within yes, them yes. Um, so the places where you, you can quite easily go yeah. I mean yeah, Ticket yeah. Avenue yeah. on a much bigger scale yes, yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so it, it's lacking those sort of things and, and while malls aren't specifically bringing that they are bringing there is a lot of entertainment to mm. go you can okay. walk around in comfortable yeah, yeah. environments they, they do have cinemas bowling mm. alleys etc yeah. um, I, I, I see mm. like a, a, a traditional uh, classic dance mm. for example uh, the Sofilin group right they mm. were a river bend in the river or something they, but these are I would say uh, Khmer modern Classical, right? yeah. but they they only show in the uh, Chatamuk, which is the the main uh, theater hall, right? Yeah. But yeah. to me, they only show occasionally. But I agree with you that we should have something more steady so that when tourists come, yeah, they know that one evening they like to go see a Khmer yeah. traditional ballet, for example, exactly. you know, yeah. uh, that perform every night, you know, as a as a a cultural attraction, right? Yeah. I, I agree. Not not just the uh, the tourists, but the 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 uh, general managers of the four or five star hotels yeah. uh, will tell you they're screaming out for more entertainment. Oh, but okay. also, I think the, the the Cambodian people, I think they're very proud of their culture and heritage, and they want to experience it more and yes. um, and, and see these things yeah. themselves. But you you uh, retail the growth of retail are predominantly driven by. Uh, the arrival of foreign brand. Uh, a lot of foreign brand are coming to Cambodia. It can be, yes. Yeah. 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 So, so not necessarily all foreign brand. Then, you know, uh, uh, say the, in this big retail, right? You see all the the big uh, big name Levi, yeah. Adidas, Nike, yeah. uh, Starbucks, all that. Yeah. Uh, so, so they they are driving the these all these uh, the growth, or you see also some domestic. Yes, um, I think there's, there's two sides. I mean, what you've just said is is, is apparel, is, is mm. fashion. Yes. Uh, fashion, shoes, yes, brands are mm. going to have a, a place okay. in everyone's heart because that's why they spend millions and billions on marketing. Mm. Yes. So to, to design that place in, in your heart and to want a... Um, yeah, I don't shop your your Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to want an expensive handbag yeah. versus, yeah, yeah. you know, a, a sure. coffee. Yeah. yeah. Um, but there's uh, retail can uh, cover um, health, uh, okay. s uh, smoothies, yes. or um, so one of the things for the bridge might be you know a gym and yes. uh, uh, healthcare right. smoothies and healthcare products and fitness products. It could be all in one. I'm saying in that building it could be it could be everything. Well, exactly. And and if you go in BKK, also you have uh, electrical products. Mm. Um, and everything from your iPhone, yes. your cover, your case. But do, do, do you see that eventually the big mall will kill the small uh, mom and pop store? Now this is something I studied when I, I, was, I was at school in yeah. the UK because we have a, a not as, well super malls, mm. not as super as the US. Which yes, is yes, just, yeah, huge. yeah, yeah. But very big sort of malls opening up in, in the outskirts of cities. Mm. With very good transport connections and parking, so yeah. they're extremely convenient. And then the size of them meant all the shops were under mm. one one roof. Yeah. And and to some extent, it did kill small towns, mm. uh, small towns and, and traditional mom and pop stores and yes. high street or yes. high street retail. Um, there's a, there's going to be a long long way to go before okay. that ever happens. Oh, okay. uh, okay. I mean, Phnom Penh is, is a city, is a very small city. Yeah. Um, you, Cultural trends won't change that quickly, okay. um, and those mom and pop stores, there will be places within for them within malls. Yes, um, but and t t to see drastic change, I think you know we, we have to look a decade, okay. two decades. Oh, all right, all right. That's reassuring <laughs> for the people on the street. I don't think there's you know, yeah. and, and like something I always wonder because y y you mentioned about this this uh, cultural. Thing, you know it's hard to change because if you look along the certain street they all sell the same product mm -hmm. and I say well you know uh, how how it's so easy to compare price <laughs> but again maybe they have a pricing structure among themselves mm -hmm. so that they don't undercut each other I don't know but uh, I find it weird you, know, you 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 go to Europe you go to certain place only one you know shop sell that or the other uh, shop sell something else you know mm -hmm. 
uh, and they all cohabitate right there in my city. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to take another break, and when we come back, we'll, we'll cover the last two things that I am very keen to talk about. Uh, office space, uh, you know, and coastal area development. Mm. Yeah. Good. Sammy, uh, the Exchange Square is going to be inaugurated soon, right? Yep. By Hong Kong land, and you can yep. see every day they, they try to remove this green screen there. You start to see the shape yeah, yep. of the building, and uh, I heard uh, a lot of good uh, things about them, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, they are grade A, like uh, Watanat Tower, right? Yeah. How, how many, what is the percentage of grade A building uh, for office space in, in Phnom Penh, for example? Uh, what is the percentage of... A grade A building, right? Um, well, it's it's only Exchange Square and, and Batonet Capital, which, right? which can call themselves grade A. Ah, yeah. okay. As office space, right? As office so, space. So the other building that is sprucing up, they are not office space? Um, in terms of grade A office space, they're the only two okay. uh, which are slated at the moment. Mm. Um, the, the grading system is, 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 is complicated to the level that it uh, allows incorporation of degree of su subjectivity. Okay, okay. So I think most developers, um, or, or certainly some developers, want to go out there and say, uh, we're grade A, well... Yes. Uh, CBRE, we use we use a, a rating mechanism. Okay. Uh, our rating mechanism would only put that in that capital. Okay. okay. Uh, so, so, in that case, other building who have office space, you can say high end or something like this, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, Phnom Penh Tower is is a a perfectly acceptable building. A, a occupancy has been above sort of ninety percent mm. for the last three years. Mm. Um, you're right. You're right. It, it's now. very well well fit to the market. Yeah. But and, and it should be happy that it's grade B. Yeah. Good. That's that's no bad thing. It, mm. it it absolutely suits the market. And there's over a hundred tenants in there who, who are very happy. How how what 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 how do you judge? Give me some criteria. Ah, oh, it's 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 hard, right? It, it's it's a long list. It's a long it's list, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, okay. All well, your energy rating, uh, your construction materials, number of elevators, number of parking, mm. where you are in the city, where mm. you are in the city, relate relevant to um, public transport. Wow. Um, so so also external factor. Yes. Uh, yeah. Have a direct. Uh, it does impact yeah. on that. Yeah. It does, yeah. As well as the quality of the building itself, the maintenance. I, I think this yeah. is one of the things that bothers me all the time that uh, I go to many new buildings. I would say new because they built was just a year ago. But then you walk in, you see that the maintenance is is really, you know, uh, not doing. Uh, I would say. Uh, it's not doing good because yeah. you go there, yeah. you you f you feel that it's not clean, it's not uh, I would say doesn't represent the building from yeah. the outside. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you've touched on a, a really important issue there. Um, for for office buildings, the service charges really are between sort of for the lowest quality buildings two, but up to five dollars. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and anywhere between sort of uh, four to to five dollars. Um, gives the, the management company or the, the, the management a big enough budget to allow for cleaning and repairs and yes. for that to be a well-managed building. There, there is a market failure hmm. uh, that exists at the moment where most developers and uh, buyers of, hmm. of residential units believe service charges should be half a dollar, half you know, fifty cents. Oh my God! Or uh, seventy-five cents, and, and a dollar's expensive. For example, if you take a building which is half the size of Penang Tower, yeah, um, uh, that that building is residential, yeah, uh, and it's ten thousand square meters mm. net. If you manage that building on fifty cents mm. a month mm. square meter, yeah. You have five thousand dollars a month to manage the building. You have to have a property manager, an operations manager, technical yeah. man, accounts manager, no cleaning, way. security, no way. insurance, yeah. pest control. No way. You can't. You can't. Um, so I mean, and, and those those ten thousand square meters, a lot of those buildings that we see, which are quite tall, hmm. 
16 to 20 but not a huge footprint yes, um, yes. so quite tall and, and thin which there's a lot of those style of buildings yes. coming up they cannot be managed effectively yes. for, for, for really less than two dollars yeah. a square meter I mean just to um, sometimes you see what not how you have the guy that clean that hang from there can you imagine yeah. how expensive it is to, to have a uh, yeah. guy like hanging on the rope yeah, you know, Spider Man. Yeah. Spider-Man, yeah. <laughs> You're right, these are yeah. expensive. Yeah. There's, there's costs, there's, there's costs that um, lots of people don't know, and it's, um, you know, to, to, to argue and say, well, I want, I want it cheaper, hmm. um, it's, it's really cutting your nose off to spite your face hmm. because you should have a sinking fund which is a fund which isn't even used to day to day operations just sits in a bank account in the cruise but after 5 years 10 years you might need to replace the elevators yeah. or have a capital expense budget yeah. if you don't do these things and maintain yeah. the property the long term value of that investment which you've spent 100,000 200,000 half a million on your condo nobody's going to buy it if the le roof leaks if the elevators are always turned off so, so this is a really important issue, and, um, and and that's why we go back to what you said earlier that investors who are buying this uh, condo or this office space there, uh, they should look for good developer, mm, yeah, developer absolutely. who five year, ten year down the road are still there managing the building. Yeah. Right, because if not, you start to see already some nice building turning into a ghetto building. You know, you you start to see people hanging their clothes outside. And yeah. Suddenly, yeah. the paint start to peel off. Yeah. Uh, the elevator is not working. Yeah. You know. Uh, uh, so anyway, I'm I'm glad you touched that base, and I hope uh, uh, you know our audience who listen to that and <laughs> they happen to be some local developer will start appreciating the the you know the need to have adequate funding for property management, sure. right? Is there a, a good prop, uh, property management company now available uh, in, in the market now? Um, or, or is that purely from the lack of, of that type of service? That's why people don't understand? No, I, I mean, I think CBRE, uh, I sort of, to cut, I think CBRE, we're, we're quite good at it. Okay. Uh, I think we are one of the, the leading firms in this. But even, you know, and I actually run that department uh, directly under me, but I cannot grow that department too big, um, mm. generally because of human resources. Okay. Um, there aren't enough uh, skilled property managers mm. uh, in the market, but that's that's natural because there haven't been many tall buildings. Exactly, before, exactly. And there haven't even been these buildings of of, of much higher standard construction yes. and uh, quality. Um, and these uh, foreign buyers and, and international investors. Um, and the whole condo concept um, yeah. he's five years old yes he's five years old <laughs> so it, it, it's not going to be easy yeah. um, but those developers who, who who really you know don't sort of shell property management or let the problems just run down the stream yes. and property there's ones who really sort of tackle it yes. and say okay we, we're going to invest as a developer once we've sold we're not just going to say goodbye. We, we're yep. going to make sure that it's managed well. Mm, okay. Um, they're, they're, they're the ones who, who will make sure that they have the experience property managers. Good. Well, uh, Simon, we're almost running out of time. I want to okay. touch a bit on the last part of what we plan to discuss, which is more coastal area development. Yeah. yeah. What, what do you see the the prospect? I see now more and more yeah. tourists going there. A lot of big project going there. So. Yeah. What, 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 what do you see from your perspective? Um, I see a lot of growth uh, mm. coming in, in the, the coastal regions. Uh, two sectors, mm. tourism, yeah. uh, but also industrial. Industrial, yeah. Yes. Industrial, I, you know, Sinotville SEZ is, is the biggest yes. now in, in the country. Um, there's a lot of uh, uh, Chinese in there. Yes. Um, with ASEAN, uh, I think there's a, a lot more hmm. uh, room for that to expand and yes. grow. Uh, the highway down to the coast. Yes. That's yeah. being negotiated now. Yeah, 240 kilometres it is. Hmm. Uh, on a highway, you can comfortably and safely travel hmm. at 100 kilometres an hour. Yeah, yeah. You're, we, you're in with two and a half hours to the hour. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and, and you feel safe doing it. Yes, yes. <laughs> 
Um, but those sectors, the, the story is really, uh, it's China as well. Yes. Um, I mean, not all the tourism will come from China, but it, it will be a big driver. Mm. Um, we have two sort of mega resorts, one in Reem yes. uh, and one it, in Hong Kong. Is the Reem uh, staff the development with you? Yeah, the infrastructure is all in. It's, okay. uh, these new developments, big developments, have like the best roads in Cambodia. Mm. So the infrastructure is in uh, and some of the buildings are now getting completed. Mm. Um, it's it's with Sunak Will, it's always been a bit of a case of, of a chicken and the egg. Yes, yes. Which one comes first? The... Do the hotels and resorts come mm. first, or, or do the flights come yes, first? Yes. So, yes. Um, and both uh, the positive energy behind Cambodia is driving mm. both mm. forward mm. at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, what what do you see in Cap, for example? Cap um, Cap is, is a beautiful place. Uh, I see more boutique tourism yeah. going on, yeah, on yeah. there for now. Yeah. There, there was recently announced uh, twenty five billion dollars uh, FDI yeah. approved. Um, yeah, I mean that sounds like an uh, incredibly large. Sum. Yes, yes. <laughs> I think you can you can buy the the province for for that, but um, that that's that's wait and see. Yes, I, yes. I think you know sustainable development and cap for now yeah. will be uh, boutique. Mm. Um, there are a lot of places, but I think we'll, we'll perhaps see a slight upgrading of the city. Yes, yeah, and, indeed, uh, indeed. More entertainment, more, mm. and, but more, more to do. Although people go to Cap more uh, to have some peace sure. and and calm, you know, sure. like you, you stay in a nice bungalow overlooking the ocean and then relax, you know. Yeah, yeah. something along that line. Yeah, but uh, and on the Kokong area, there's also a big traction there, also. You know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah a, a big, uh, big, big development. Yeah. Um, coming in, which will have its own airport as mm. well. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so uh, the coastal region really has been an untapped resource. Mm. I mean, this that there are a few naysayers who say, uh, "Well, this is all Chinese investment. It's it's them who's going to reap the lucrative awards." Mm. But you're talking, you know, hundreds and hundreds of millions, even in terms of billions. Um, a bit like the, the the theory behind concession land. Okay? Yeah, yeah. The, the government, the people don't have all the money to put in the infrastructure, the yeah. uh, um, to to really make the, this farmland fertile. So yeah. the concept behind concessions was allow other people to do it, and then eventually you know, yeah. Cambodia will claim it back. Yeah. It, it's it's similar what you're yeah, seeing yeah. here. You know, so a lot of the infrastructure, tourism infrastructure, yeah. and and it it's providing a huge number of jobs. Exactly. Uh, and these people will then become, you go to Thailand who have been doing hospitality for 20, 30 years and mm. you go and, and it's brilliant, they treat yeah. you so well mm. and, and it still feels very ethically Thai. Yes, yes. Um, you know, so that's what, you know, Cambodia, and, uh, but, so these people will start to upskill mm. and um, mm. there'll be huge... Yeah, particularly now you, you see a big traction uh, for the island. Yeah. Tourism, for example, yeah. you know, it's quite interesting. Even initially, it was only the foreigner, right, mm. foreign tourists. But now the the local, yeah, say they are also considering, yeah. you know, going to the island. Yeah. Before we will go to uh, Sibiria, apparently, and it's it's clear. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Simon, I think we are coming to the end of the show, but I think we have we we, we have really, you know. Uh, Touching quite a broad spectrum, right? Yes, yes. From uh, the whole country, yeah. as uh, it uh, benchmark with the uh, other country in the region, down to Phnom Penh, different sector, retail, residential, a bit of Bore, you know, uh, office space, and then we wrap it up with yeah. the coastal area. Not bad over. for a 45 minute uh, <laughs> uh, road show yeah. across <laughs> Cambodia. But thank you so much for, uh, for coming. and. Uh, I hope the, 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 the audience will have uh, an opportunity to appreciate a bit uh, the growth prospect of uh, a country. Uh, let's face it, you know, we, we now enter a, a economic development stage that we are in low middle income country, uh, the middle class is rising, uh, and all this real estate development, particularly the retail and the, the, the residential area does give an opportunity for uh, a young thriving middle class to also, you know, appreciate the quality of life that a good economic development does offer. And in, in that sense, I see the arrival of the big brand coming to country 
is also uh, sort of like boosting the the competition uh, also, and it surely helped the local uh, Cambodian company to start benchmarking, you know, with this international company. It'll be a while before they can compete with them, but they sure have now an opportunity to see how big company operate, what are their standard, and the one thing that I appreciate from from Simon uh, uh, anecdote is on the property management. You know, we 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 still are very far in terms of appreciating that you if you spend a uh, hundred dollar to build something, but you are you don't want to spend five dollar to keep that a hundred dollar investment. You know, uh, uh, you know. Of good quality, but these are the things that only through time you can learn, that you can uh, you know appreciate. But in the meantime, I think let's ride the, the growth of this country. Good night.